can I tell you? Why, I mean, you know, the thing is star is used for complex conjugation. It's used for the adjoint mapping. It's used for the dual of a vector space. It's used for the Hodge dual other places. It's used for, I mean, I don't know what to say. It's just, there's a, there's a problem here with stars. Should I just say dual, dual V every time? I don't know, it's, it's just, I'm using standard notation and the standard notation in places is redundant. That's why I'm not too big a fan of like F's lower substar and F upper substar. I mean, there, the, the push forward is F lower star, the pull back is F upper star. When I was in your place, when I was learning these things the first time, I found it horribly confusing. I much prefer this, the um, abusing the language in terms of the advanced calculus, so I'm using the differential. You're like, well, you already start to find the differential as something else back on our end. Is that really the same thing? Well, it's less of an abuse. So there is a big change of, of scenery here. The differential, at the first part of the course, the differential, what it was it? It was, it was essentially the best linearization to the change on a norm linear space, right? So the differential actually was a mapping from norm linear space to norm linear space. Now I'm telling you the differential, quote unquote, the push forward is a mapping of tangent vectors to tangent vectors. It maps derivations to derivations. How can we have both at the same time? Well, it's because in norm linear spaces, there's a simple identification of the norm linear space with its tangent vectors. It's exactly the thing we do at the start of calculus three, or even calculus two, where we identify points and vectors. See, there's a natural correspondence between points and vectors for a vector space. Um, so that's the abuse of the first half of the course is that we are identifying points and vectors. Now, now that we're past that first test and we've grown up, now I'm being more honest, what the differential really is, is it's mapping from, 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 from vectors to vectors, which are derivations. But we will still use that ident identification that we had in the first part of the course when it suits us. Like if we're working an example and there may come a point where using the notation partial partial x and partial partial y for x hat and y hat is just obnoxious, we may at different points in our life drop those and still calculate. I mean, we sometimes still make the identification of points and vectors. So, I mean, it's just, it's something to be aware of and it can be really confusing if you're not aware that that's what somebody's doing. Um, if you feel like I'm doing it and you're not sure if I'm doing it or not, you can always ask me. <laughs> but, so you, you asked me why one thing was confusing and then I gave you a list of 10 other confusing things. So, <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> Oh, uh, uh, my, my, my answer was what? My, my answer was, my, my answer, my answer is better stated as mathematicians are awesome, but they talk about so many different things. We only have so many symbols. It's the English people who are stupid. They didn't give enough, give us enough symbols to write. So we, we should just blame you. I should start using Pac-Man. I should, I should really just pick up Chinese. Then I'd have all the symbols I need. Well, there's the problem, right? So I advertised... I advertised to you guys... I advertised to you last guys that you'd already been doing push forwards because you calculate how to change partial partial x to in, in terms of partial r and partial theta, that's actually pushing forward the partial x derivation to its corresponding partial r partial theta derivations. Now there we're using in some, you know, we're using the same manifold with different coordinate systems. Of course you could think of it as using different manifolds like two copies of R2, you could view it that way. Now here I'm about to tell you that the the pullback, it's it's, it's really entirely, entirely natural. And so I gave you this like complicated, sophisticated definition of what a pullback is, but when it actually comes to it, all it really means is to plug in defining formulas and make a substitution. So the actual computation of pullbacks is fantastically simple. Let me look, look at it. Now, by the way, there is one thing I haven't, the definition to be complete, I should also talk about the case when Q is equal to zero. How do you, how do you pull back a zero form? 
I forgot to talk about that. In other words, how do you take a function on n and make it into a function on m? If I have a function, let's say, g, like this, to the reals, the pullback of g is equal to what? I need a function like that, right? So I just do f followed by g. In other words, g composed with f. So the pullback is just composition for zero forms. Which really goes to the heart of what the pullback is, which is it's a substitution. Let me be more explicit about this. Let's look at a specific example where I'll try to make good um, on my claim. All right, but I'm going to work with the definition that I just gave you. So we're looking at f of r theta equals to r cosine theta, r sine theta. I'm going to try to look at x, y as the, as the coordinates in the range, and r and theta as the coordinates in the domain. I'm going to pull back dx and dy to the r theta space. So dx and dy live in the, in the range. And let's, let's try to pull them back. Oh, I'm sorry. I seem to have, oh, man, I, I, I can't read my own example. Apparently, I'm working with the inverse map. <laughs> I'm going to pull back dr and d theta under the inverse map, right? So if, if f goes this way, f inverse goes that way. So to pull back dr over to dx, I use the inverse map to pull it back. No, well, pull, put, they're different. Push, push forward is for vectors. Pullbacks are for forms. They are related. I mean, we use the push forward to define the pullback. It's true. Anyway, sorry. I, I should have just said g goes from you know x y to r theta and worked with that. I just I, I don't know why I haven't fixed this. It's not wrong. It's just we'll look at where the discussion we're having. <sighs> OK, so the definition of the pullback of the inverse is I take the differential. Um, uh, so um, oh, man, words fail me. OK, so for just a one, so I'm looking at a one form, right? So if this, if this is just a one form, what does this collapse to? Right? So <clears throat> the pullback of dr is what? So why do I have? I've got dr partial x partial partial x um, plus dr partial partial y. Why is that? <sighs> okay, so what is f inverse is equal to what? I guess my question is what is what is the What's this look like? So we're looking at what's, you know, what's df inverse? Uh, man, I'm sorry, guys. This was not, I, I'm, I have. Glad a CFAR didn't come today. How embarrassing. 
I, I don't know. I, I, I'm having trouble interpreting. Let me let me go on. Oh, stink. <laughs> Uh, all right. I mean, the 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 it's supposedly going to be. Oh, I'm an idiot. I just can't. This is what comes from trying to use the projector and not writing out enough. Look. So if I have, you know. Pull back under F inverse of dr, right? And I have to act on what? Oh, that's the thing is I haven't written what it's acting on. That's what's confusing me in one thing. So if this is acting on, say, vector v, what would this be? This would be dr, right? Acting on df inverse of v. But this, now if we take v equals to, so you just take v equals to like partial partial x or v equals to partial partial y, I think. Let me think about that for a second. Are those the basis uh, for where f inverse goes? f inverse goes from where to where? Yeah, so in F inverse takes R2 with XY coordinates as its domain, right? So partial partial X and partial partial Y are a basis for the tangent space. So if I can define this pullback, um, well, anyway, so, um, oh, but the pullback is where, uh, gosh, wrong with me. Many things, but let's see here. Um, Oh, but the pullback should be a differential form on R2 with R theta, right? So I should be not looking at, I should look at what? Partial partial R and partial partial theta because this should be what? This should be differential, one form on R2 with the R theta coordinates, right? So then if I put in partial partial r, well that's the push forward of partial partial r under the inverse map. By the calculation we did the other day, that's just the partial derivative with respect to r rewritten in terms of partial partial x and partial partial y. By the intuitive calculation I showed you for the, for the push forward. And so that's why I have, you know, um, what I have here. Um, oh, I don't know. Sorry, this is not at all what I wanted to do. Let me go on. So dr is x dx plus y dy over the square root of x plus y squared. d theta is minus y dx plus x dy over x squared plus y squared. You could actually see this as being dr pulls back to dx x dx plus y dy over x squared plus y squared. You could think d theta pulls back to minus dy y dx plus x dy over x squared plus y squared. These are actually you can actually view these as being pullbacks of dr and d theta from r theta space to xy space. That's what I'm trying to work through. I'm just I'm getting lost in my own my own notation at the moment, which is sad but true. Now, what is it, there, there, there's much more to say here. Um, but I'll show you, um, well, I, I, goodness gracious. I Man, I wish we had another 20 minutes, oh well. Um, this is actually, I should have I gone over to here. It's, this is much clearer. This is what I read earlier. I assume that that made sense. But here, if you look at the, here I calculate the pullback. Um, here I just look at you know something much more concrete, but but arbitrary, and that's helpful actually. So I, I look at a function from R two to R three f, and 
um, I look at a one form, ADX plus BDY plus CDZ. I say, okay, so what's the pullback of this one form from R3 to R2? What does it look like? And so <clears throat> I do that. So I have to calculate I have to calculate df right of partial u and um, df of partial v because you know those those are the those are the basis for the vector fields in the domain right the domain has coordinates uv so the, the tangent space is spanned by partial u and partial v so if I calculate then I calculate df of partial u and df of partial v in order to figure out what the pullback looks like so that's these right. So omega of this, um, so what happens when you plug in part df of partial u, which is this expression, into adx? What, what does that do? adx does what? It just picks off this term, right? Because dy of partial, um, you know, dy of partial partial x is 0, dz of partial partial x is 0. And then um, likewise, when the BDY hits this, it only picks up this term. And the CDZ only picks up that term when you look at this evaluation. So that's how you get A partial X partial U, B partial Y partial U, C partial Z partial U, and likewise, partial derivatives with respect to V. But you know, guys, th these are exactly what? I mean, what is, what is that? So if you look at it, right, what we have is the pullback of omega is this du plus that dv. But if you regroup these terms and think about what they are, we have a times partial x partial u du plus partial x partial v dv. We've got b times partial y partial u du partial y partial v dv. C, you know, like this. But what are these? This is nothing more than the differential of x written in uv coordinates. This is the differential of y written in uv coordinates. This is the differential of z written in uv coordinates. So what it's saying is to calculate the pullback of ADX plus BDY plus CDZ, you simply put in what X is as a function of U and V and what Y is as a function of U and V and what Z is as a function of U and V. Where X, Y, and Z are the, the component functions of the F, the mapping from the UV space to the X, Y, V space. So it's like I'm saying, it's, just, it's, it's really just a substitution. Um, but anyway, I'll spend another at least half hour on this, and then we'll hopefully do the punk ray conjecture next time, which will show you something like a generalization of when we can find potential energy functions and so forth. So anyway, thanks, guys. <laughs>